For those of us who enjoy a certain era of retro computing, it can be a never ending quest to find just the right replacement for old failing IDE hard drives. <laughs> I've tried a ton of different solutions over the years to varying degrees of success, mostly different iterations of SATA and mSATA drives on various adapters. So when DOSDude1 sent me one of his open source native IDE SSDs, I was super excited about it. But in that video's comments, a bunch of you mentioned the uh, <laughs> rather expensive IDE SSD that's currently listed on Amazon, which I've always been a bit suspicious about. So today I've spent nearly a dollar a gigabyte to buy one <laughs> and we're gonna see just what exactly is inside this thing and how it performs next to some of the other options, including that open source SSD. So stay tuned. And if you truly believe that one person's e-waste is another person's treasure, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. So I have a lot of old Power Macs. Like, a lot. Boy howdy, do I have a lot. And in pretty much all of them, there's some type of solid state SSD hard drive replacement. I originally went with 2.5 inch SATA SSDs on IDE adapters and these worked pretty well, though not all of my old Macs liked them. I'm looking at you, Grape iMac. And then I found even more success with these mSATA hard drives and these 2.5 inch IDE to mSATA adapters. And bonus, they fit in just about every laptop. And recently I've been using flashed PCI SATA controller cards and SATA SSDs, which actually boot both Mac OS 9 and Mac OS 10. But after using DOS Dude 1's 256 gigabyte native IDE SSD, it really got me wondering just what is inside this expensive 64 gig Amazon special and is it really worth the premium? So I picked up this one and we're gonna crack it open and sacrifice it to the SSD gods. And then we're gonna benchmark it using this crazy upgraded Power Mac G4 MDD. But first I'm dying <laughs> to crack this thing open because I'm really suspicious about what's inside. And can it compare to the elegant simplicity of Dawsud 1's creation? Speaking of this Dawsud 1 SSD, what a great job on the printed circuit board. I wonder why it looks so good and feels so good. Oh yeah, it was printed by the sponsor of today's video, PCBWay. Not only do they offer high quality PCB prototyping and production, they also offer on-site PCB assembly. And they can source some of the components with their turnkey service. This particular drive was assembled by hand, but you could get most of these components sourced and assembled right at the PCBWay facility. So it lands on your doorstep just about ready to go. It's amazing the things we can do these days with professional PCB fabrication houses like PCB Way. So if you have any PCB 3D printing, fabrication, or prototyping needs, I hope we give PCBWay.com a try. All right, let's crack this thing open and see what's inside. Yeah, look at that. Nice little cable included. All right, it is uh, a nice metal enclosure, but I'm very suspicious as to what is inside because I have seen mostly on eBay companies selling this as an IDE SSD and inside of it is just an mSATA adapter. So I'm wondering if this is the same thing just in a fancy metal case or is it really integrated all on one circuit board inside? And how that compares to the open source DOS Dude 1 SSD. Aha! Oh, look at that. This actually is 
an IDE SSD. And let's compare it to the DOS Dude 1. Okay, so it's a little hard to read the chips on, especially the DOS Dude 1 SSD. So I've brought them all over to the brand new Action Retro Microscope Station. Ooh. And we'll start with the King Spec SSD. Ooh, look how cool that looks. <laughs> and yeah, the controller chip here is the SM2236G. And on our DOS Dude 1 here, we have the same controller chip. All right, so let's take a look at these memory chips. Intel 29F. Well, that's a lot of letters and numbers. Okay, so it turns out these are using just about the same Intel memory chips. So in theory, both of these drives should perform about the same. So I'm really interested to benchmark these against one another now to see, does one perform better? Are they both on par? In which case, the better value is probably the DOS Dude 1 drive, which should be much less expensive especially if you build it yourself, because again, open source. So this is gonna be our test bench machine. It's a 2002 PowerMac G4 MDD. MDD standing for mirror drive doors, referencing these lovely things right here. But inside, it's the perfect test bench because, well, it's been uh, <laughs> somewhat reasonably upgraded with, uh, the 867 megahertz G4 replaced with a dual two gigahertz custom card, a flashed PC graphics card, and modern power supply. And it also has three different speeds of IDE inside. 33, 66, and 100 hiding back here behind the heatsink, which is the fastest you can get in a G4 Power Mac. So I'm just gonna take this silly extra fan thing out of here. <laughs> and then how I want to do this is we're going to boot the computer off of a SATA controller card and then use IDE 100 as our test bed. Okay, and here's all the things that we're going to test. We have our two main contenders, of course, the IDE SSDs. I also want to test what is also technically an IDE SSD, this industrial flash disk module that's only four gigabytes. We're going to test this IDE adapter for SATA, this IDE adapter for SATA. We'll test an mSATA SSD on an IDE adapter. And just for fun, we'll take a benchmark of the PCI SATA controller card and this new inbox Sonnet PCI-X SATA controller card, which should be way faster than everything. Although I don't believe it's actually bootable, which is a shame. So I'll show you how I'm going to hook up the DOS Dude card and what we're gonna to use to benchmark it. And then we'll super speed montage through some of the other cards and see where we're at. So I've got this nice extra long ATA-133 cable here so we can dangle the drive out of the way. And I also have an adapter here so we can plug laptop style hard drives into this desktop connector, such as the DOS Dude 1 drive here. Oh, I almost forgot. DOS Dude was kind enough to create a 3D printable case for his SSD which I printed out here and it's quite nice. Although I decided to take some liberties with this design. So I present to you the DOS Dude rules case, <laughs> which yeah, is pretty much the same thing that DOS Dude made. Although I added some vents to it and uh, I made it so it could snap together. And uh, yeah, of course, DOS Dude rules. So let's give this a shot and we'll open up our benchmarking software. And we'll be doing our benchmarking today on Xbench, 
which allows us to select a volume and then run just a disk test on it. So I'm going to do a fresh erase on here and we'll do the benchmark for each drive on a freshly formatted Mac OS extended journaled. All right, first test, off we go. All right, DOS Dude benchmarks complete, saving SSD benchies right on the desktop. Next up, the Amazon Special. Huh, and for some reason, the computer just won't boot with my tried and true MSATA adapter. Well, it doesn't like this adapter either. All right, none of my MSATA adapters want to work in this Mac, so yeah, no free lunch in this test. I'm just gonna write these off as fail. Next up, teeny tiny SATA adapter that works great in the TAM. Super cheap SATA to IDE adapter. Slightly more expensive SATA to IDE adapter. Just for fun, a brand new SanDisk Ultra 120 megabytes per second SD card. And we'll do a CF card since that's a pretty common solution because CF cards are actually IDE devices. So the adapter doesn't have to do a whole bunch of rigmarole to convert it. Industrial flash module, which plugs directly into the motherboard. SATA connected to PCI SATA controller card. The PCI X SATA controller card, which I have never actually used, even though I took it out of its plastic. This should be the fastest by far, but we'll find out. Okay, results are in and oh boy, there are some surprises. First off, in the battle between DOS Dude 1 and the KingSpec drive, which I expected to be about the same since they both have the same controller chip and the same memory chips, but actually the DOS Dude 1 drive was significantly faster with an overall test score of 68.35 versus the KingSpec's 50.78. It's significantly slower than DOS Dude's drive. And I asked DOS Dude what he thought of this test result, and he said he knows that the KingSpec PCB itself is kind of a lower quality, and I think it's a little more complex too. The DOS Dude drive is simpler and faster. Even bigger surprises lurk in the overall scores. The Sonnet PCI-X controller card obviously was the fastest, scoring 279.44. I expected that, and unfortunately that card is not bootable, but I think I'm going to leave it in the MDD. The biggest surprise, by far, even more than the DOS2 drive versus the King spec, is this little thing came in second place. The IDE to SATA adapter connected to the fast IDE bus on the computer even beat out the dedicated PCI SATA controller card with the same hard drive attached to it. That's incredible. This scored a 223.83. The PCI SATA card scored 206.96. This was significantly faster. <laughs> so I think I'm going to use this as the boot device in the MDD. And yeah, this is a StarTech adapter. I'll link this down in the description below because yeah, if you have a desktop Power Mac, this thing is awesome. I was also really surprised at just how poor the disk on module did, scoring a 25.24, way less than the SD card. The SD card, 46.46. Almost as fast as that super expensive KingSpec IDE SSD. And I was honestly surprised at just how poor the CF card was. 15.39. Now I'm sure this is not an incredibly fast CF card. You can get faster CF cards than this, but wow. 
15.39. So, yeah, if you have a very old 68K IDE Mac, maybe a CF card is a good idea. Otherwise, you're probably better off even with the DOS 2 card in your old laptops. I am definitely going to pester DOS Dude 1 for more of these drives because these are remarkably inexpensive. They are less than half the cost per gigabyte than the other Kingspec IDE, and they are significantly faster, and they will fit in just about any computer, laptop or desktop. So again, DOS Dude, thank you so much for developing this IDE SSD. And on that one heck of a bombshell, I'm gonna call this video here. And I think it was pretty productive. I'm really surprised by some of the results that we got. And I now have a new hard drive solution in my world's fastest mirror drive doors. And I have an even deeper respect for the DOS Dude IDE SSD, even though it's the same controller chip and memory chips as this Janssen King Spec from Amazon, it's much faster. So if you want a cheap, open source, and reliable SSD solution for your IDE computers, I think you really can't go wrong with this DOS Dude drive. And did I mention it's open source? I'll link to the GitHub down below and also to DOS Dude's site where I'm pretty sure he started selling these as complete and finished units. But if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more Macintosh shenanigans like this, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching. And a special thanks to Alex Hoffman, Camila Noseda, Chris Allegretta, Chris Biggs, Chris Calderon, Chris Nelson, Control Alt Reese, Daniel Hubbard, Greg from Hrut K Mods, Justin Hemmings, Justin Reed, Megahertz Models, Michael Mulhern, Paul Spencer, Ryan, Scott Thompson, Sutek, Tom Woodfin, and Unknown Soldier 41, who are my highest tiered patrons and all of my Patreon supporters who help to make these videos possible.